Cassoulet is synonymous with the south of France. It's a rich, hearty stew that's made up of creamy white beans and smoked pork and sausages. But I'm going to give my cassoulet a little bit of a twist today by using a mixture of seafood. First, I need to heat a large pot with a good glug of extra virgin olive oil. And I'll begin by sauteing one onion that's been finely chopped. And I've just been slicing my carrot into rounds. That was a large carrot. This is going to give the beans a really nice sweetness. A few cloves of garlic, four or five cloves. And instead of slicing them, because these beans are going to be cooking for a long time, just bruise them lightly. And they're going to soften up and turn really, really sweet. All right, we'll toss that in the oil. Now, I only want to cook this for about one to two minutes just to soften the onions slightly. And for the beans, these are cannellini beans or arico beans. These have a really thin shell and really creamy in the centre. I like to use dry beans and then cook them. But when you're using dried beans like this, it's important to soak them overnight. If you cook these straight away, it's going to take a long time to cook and they will become tough. So soak them overnight and you'll see that they'll double in size. Then I've just rinsed them and then drained them. Now that this onion has softened, the next stage is to add a bouquet garni. This bouquet garni has some parsley in it, a little bit of leek that's wrapped around it, some bay leaves and some thyme that can go in. Really important because it is going to flavour this stew. A little bit of heat, some cayenne pepper. Not too much, we don't want to overpower it and some tomato paste. I add my tomato paste at this stage because I do like to cook it off. And now I'm going to deglaze the pan with some white wine. So we'll turn the heat up and then bring this to the boil so we cook off the alcohol. Now I'll add some diced tomatoes. Now these are thick and rich and that's exactly what I need for this recipe. I do want that concentrated tomato flavour just so it becomes a little bit heartier. So mix that in and it'll just start to bubble away. I'll add our beans that have been drained. Coat that in that yummy tomato mixture. And I'll cover this with some water. So just warm water about 10 centimetres high with water. They are going to expand quite a lot. Now for an interesting ingredient to add to this. This is salted cod. It's been preserved in salt and then dried. It's very soft now because I have placed in some cold water and left it overnight to get rid of a lot of the salt and to rehydrate it. So I'll add this now and it will withstand the heat for an hour and a half when it's simmering with our beans. So usually at this stage, if you were doing a classic cassoulet, you would add um, the smoked pork and the sausages. But because we're doing it seafood, this is a great alternative. Lid goes on, medium to low heat, one hour and a half. And then I'm going to show you the rest of the amazing seafood we're going to add to it. I'm just heating up a little bit of olive oil. This is crucial to make great breadcrumbs. So about two big handfuls of three day old bread. And I've just put it through a blender so it becomes a crumb. It'll automatically absorb all the oil, but it's going to start to go into a really crispy, crunchy crumb. Now I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Let's have a look at our gorgeous beans and that salted cod. It has been cooking for an hour and a half. Mmm, and it smells so good. You can smell the tomatoes and the herbs in there. Mmm, that is so good. It only needs a small amount of salt. You can also taste that cayenne pepper, which is great. I'm going to add another dimension to this dish. In a mortar and pestle, add a little bit of garlic, a little bit of salt so it breaks down quite easily. And I'm going to turn this into a paste. Two anchovies, a good handful of fresh parsley, break that up and then crush that. Use a little bit of elbow grease and get in there and just really turn it into a paste. We need to really loosen it up with some olive oil. And then the last ingredient I'm adding to this is some lemon zest and some lemon juice. You know, this is not essential and it's not really traditional in a cassoulet, but I find it gives it that extra special touch. So we'll put that to the side. Our crumbs, have a look. 
lovely and golden brown. They're for the very last minute, so I'm going to put them to the back. I've got another pan ready to go because it's time to cook our seafood. I'll start with my mussels. Now the mussels are going to take the longest to cook. You don't want to add them yet though, you want this to be piping hot. I'll add a good plug of olive oil too. And then once that's hot, I'll add the mussels, cook them until they start to open, and then I'll add the remaining seafood. My elements are ready to assemble. The seafood is cooked. When I say cooked, I've par cooked it. You don't want to overcook it because it is going to go back into the oven for about six to eight minutes. Now I'm just adding half of the beans and the cod. It smells so good. You can see all the little flakes of cod throughout that tomato bean. And we'll do the first layer of seafood, which is half of the prawns, heads and all. I promise you, this is so worth leaving them on because there is so much flavour and all the juices when it's cooking in the oven will go into the beans, making it extra tasty. So I'll add four. Some muscle meat, scatter that around. A few scallops and a good handful of the par-cooked calamari. Now for our green sauce, a few tablespoons and just drizzle it over. Now it's time for the last layer of beans and carefully pop it over the top. Spread that out. And the last amount of seafood. We'll just poke the prawns in, showing off the heads, the mussels, the rest of the scallops and the calamari. And then I've left some of our mussels in the shell just to allow them to poke out of the cassoulet with pride. And now just to protect that last amount of seafood, just going to add a few spoonfuls of the sauce and a final amount of that parsley mixture can just be drizzled over the top. Now this is going to cook for about six to eight minutes in the oven, no longer because we don't want to overcook the seafood and allow all those flavours to marry together. Well, look at that, isn't that a showstopper? Prawns, beans, it's got so much going on. Don't forget we need that crunch to make it a complete cassoulet. Breadcrumbs go over the top and there you have it. That is a seriously special cassoulet using a variety of seafood. You know what, I think I'm starting to prefer a seafood one than the traditional one. Actually, I like, I love them both equally.